greetings once again. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is VertZine, the online magazine of virtualization and cloud computing. I'm glad you can join us for netcast number 14 of VertZine. We are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on the VertZine netcast. Now, last netcast, we talked about VMware App Blast. We had a demo video from VMworld about VMware App Blast. If you missed that, I encourage you to go back and watch that episode because it was really exciting to see what VMware has coming in App Blast. But let's go into some of the new information that we have since then. Ubuntu uh, has been chosen by Hewlett Packard to power their cloud service. Now HP has a cloud service that they're developing and they decided to base it on Ubuntu uh, Linux for their server operating system. And that's really, I think, a great boost obviously to Ubuntu and uh, Canonical, which of course is Mark Shuttleworth's company that develops Ubuntu. But more important to me about Ubuntu is that it is uh, an open source product. And here is HP, in effect, betting the farm on an open source product such as Ubuntu Linux. So I'm really excited about that. I'm a big Ubuntu fan. Now, you can see back here behind me my red hat hat. <laughs> red hat hat. Uh, and of course, good old Tux back there is my uh, Linux mascot. And, uh, you know, I, I like. Linux generally anyway, but Ubuntu I'm particularly excited about because I think it's a very solid form of Linux and it's one that I enjoy using. Now I like Red Hat as well. We use Red Hat at work uh, at High Point Regional Health System where I am a system administrator and uh, Red Hat is awesome and of course you take the Red Hat source code and take out all the Red Hat logos and then CentOS, the CentOS project packages that same code exactly and CentOS uh, is a version of Linux that is available and that I use personally on my Linux servers, uh, personal servers, not the ones at work, but the personal servers that I have, I, I run CentOS. So all of those flavors of Linux are awesome, but I'm really glad that uh, HP has decided to use or to choose Ubuntu for their cloud service. Now speaking of Ubuntu, 11.10 of Ubuntu is out, the Oneric Ocelot. I love how they always come out with strange sounding uh, names for their distributions uh, as kind of a shorthand for the distribution. Oneric Ocelot, okay. Uh, at any rate, version 11.10 is what I'm running on my notebook computer. Uh, I had it dual booting between Windows 7 Professional uh, which is the operating system, of course, we use at work. And then at home, when I bring my laptop home, I boot it up into Ubuntu. And what I installed recently was an upgrade for 11.10. And I used the upgrade service built into Ubuntu and allowed it to upgrade. But the, the key thing, the reason I mentioned here on the Vertsy Netcast is that they are positioning themselves for the cloud. So the version here that they released, 11.10, they have a desktop version, as I have on my notebook, and they have a server version. And that server version is aiming toward cloud services. And I just mentioned HP has chosen them for their cloud operating system, so to speak, uh, for their the things they're going to be developing in the cloud. So it really is working well for them to develop it in, and move into a cloud orientation for Ubuntu. So. I'm seeing good things coming from the Ubuntu developers as they, they do that. Now, a new simple email service is coming out from Amazon. Now, uh, let me get into a little more detail on that. This is a letter that I got as an Amazon customer. It said, Dear Amazon customer, today we're excited to announce the immediate availability of the management console for Amazon Simple Email Service, Amazon SES. Uh, AWS is highly scalable and cost-effective bulk and transactional email sending service for businesses and developers. 
The Amazon SES Management Console is a simple, intuitive, web-based user interface for Amazon SES that allows you to do the following with a few clicks of your mouse. You can check your sending quota and usage, see your Amazon SES bounce, complete, and rejection metrics over time, verify sender email addresses, and send both formatted and raw test emails. Uh, this will all be available via their API, and they have a link to their API reference. But basically, it sounds like they're going to have a lot of tools available coming from Amazon. And Amazon is making a lot of inroads into that particular area of cloud services and SaaS software as a service. So, interesting stuff. Next item I've got for you here, GroupWise versus the cloud. Now this is a funny one to me because we still use GroupWise at High Point Regional uh, as our email. Of course, GroupWise is a Novell product. We were a Novell shop for many years, uh, have moved away from Novell, although it's still our authoritative directory. Uh, even though we moved to Active Directory 2008 recently, um, we upgraded to 2008, uh, we still have not made it the primary directory because Novell's e-directory is still the primary directory. So uh, GroupWise, of course, tying right into that. But this is what's interesting. The article from Virtualization Today talked about Los Angeles moving from GroupWise to the cloud. And of course, I thought, well, this fits right in with Vertzine, so I'm going to mention it. But here is the quote from the, um, from the, the person that wrote the article here. He says, Google crowed and crowed when it beat out Microsoft for an epic deal to move much of the city of Los Angeles from the aging GroupWise. Does anybody remember GroupWise? To Google's cloud apps. Well, I had to laugh because we use GroupWise at work, and there's more about that here in a minute. After two years of effort, Los Angeles is as miffed as Lindsay Lohan visiting her probation officer. Interesting turn of phrase. The problem is not performance, though cloud productivity apps are rarely as fast as on-premises apps, which is an issue that a lot of people are dealing with when they're dealing with cloud software as a service. And that's something to keep in mind. The, and that's just for now. I think that's going to change, but at any rate. The issue is security or lack thereof. Google argues that its apps are secure and that Los Angeles changed the rules midstream. Los Angeles is refusing to pay for all the work called for in the contract. Okay, my guess, the author says, the Google apps are basically secure, but the city government needs to be ultra safe. Most governments want to be ultra safe. So, but at any rate, going back to the GroupWise reference, a comment to this article, as I was reading it, this was a commenter, he said, does anybody remember GroupWise? For so-called experts, quotes like this are so stupid, you'd be surprised how many organizations and companies still use GroupWise. The, quote, independent voice of the Microsoft IT community sounds like a joke if you ask me. Now, he's being a little harsh, but basically he's saying, dude, you're dissing GroupWise. A lot of people still use it, including us. So, there you go. Next comment. Yes, I know Novell GroupWise well. Our company uses GroupWise version 8.0.2. Now, we're still on version 7. Hot Patch 3 today and will soon upgrade to GroupWise 2012. I didn't even know they were still developing it, but they are. When it ships in the next couple of months, we have GroupWise running on a Linux backend cluster for 20,000 users and have native clients for Mac, Linux, and Windows. We even do active sync bidirectional connections to iPhones, iPads, Androids, and more at no additional cost. Very cost-effective software solution. We've been beta, beta testing GroupWise 2012, which is a free download today, which will add more features like touchpad, iPad, browser support through GroupWise web access browser sessions. I'm using a pad here to, to read this article off of, so keeping up with pads. Well, it just goes to show, don't think that some of these older products are less uh, sexy products aren't being used because they are. They're still out there and they're still being used. So I just thought that was interesting. Anyway, next item, making FinApp easy. VMware App, uh, Finware App Factory. This got me excited because I'm already pretty excited about FinApp. You've heard me talk about FinApp before. It's VMware's application virtualization tool. 
And the whole idea here of this new product, VMware ThinApp Factory, is that it is essentially P to V for applications. So the, the idea is you can simplify the application virtualization process, specifically the annoying, cumbersome, and somewhat complicated sequencing process. And what you do is you can automatically spin up a thin app or a thin apt application from an MSI package directly. Uh, and it will go and it will set it all up for you without you having to prototype it all out and so forth. And if this works as they are claiming it's going to work, it's going to shorten the time to virtualize an application and make it easier to discover which applications will work well as a thin out application. So this is pretty neat stuff and I'm looking forward to that. I want to play with it. I want to get it in uh, to uh, work and work with it and see how it works. Now, you know, let me just digress just a minute here. When I say play with it, <laughs> a lot of people, particularly at work, kind of take issue with that. They say, play with it? Dr. Bill, you think you're here to play? No, I, that's just a phrase. It's a term that I use to indicate that I'm doing research and development, R&D, on these new products to see how well they fit into our enterprise at High Point Regional. It's, I consider it part of my job as a system administrator to check out these technologies and see if they would work in our environment and if they would work well in our environment and then be able to bring them in and help solve the needs of our user base. I mean, as I said recently in a, in a phone call uh, meeting that I was in, I, I, I let my tongue slip, which as you know can happen. <laughs> and. Uh, I had a slip of the tongue and I said, we won't know if the software that we're working on is set up uh, and has no issues until we, and I tried to say, let it loose on our users. Instead I said, let the losers use it. <laughs> well, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> and that, everybody laughed and of course knew that I had a little Freudian slip. No. I, I just. My tongue got a little tie, tied up, so like it is right now. So at any rate, <laughs> no. I went on to say, after I made that slip, we are here for the users. If it weren't for the users, there would be no need to have uh, information technology support. And of course, everybody said, yes, that's right, and they agreed. <laughs> it was an awkward moment, because there was about 14 people on the call when I did that. Wow. Anyway, the point is, and the point that I want to take out of this is that we are here for the users. And so my playing, and I put that in quotes, uh, with new applications is to see if they fit in the environment and see if it will help our users do the job that they are there to do. And I work at a hospital. Believe me, what we do is very, very important, very critical, and it is not only business critical, it is life and death critical in very many cases. And so we want to be sure that we're doing right by our user community and get them the best applications that we can. So that's why I want to look at it. All right, last item for this particular netcast, General Motors makes a move to Google Apps. Now, we were talking about how Los Angeles was having a little bit of an issue moving to Google Apps because they were concerned over security. Well, General Motors is making the move, and they are making the move to Gmail as their underlying mail infrastructure, and Google Apps for cloud-based software as a service, and they are therefore not going to be using Microsoft Office, which I'm sure Microsoft's not very thrilled with. And of course, Microsoft has cloud-based software as a service Office, which is Office 365. And I personally have an Office 365 uh, contract, I guess you'd call it, $6 a month for a single user. And I'm using it just to get a feel for how that software as a service works and how reliable it is, how quick it is. Uh, so they could have gone that way, but instead they're going with Google Apps. And it's going to save them a ton of money to do this and to no longer use the heavy regular Microsoft Office system 
uh, for all of their users because they have a hundred thousand users at General Motors and so this is going to be a big move for them to go this route so uh, I'm curious to see how this works out I want to get more reports on this and see how Google Apps works out for uh, General Motors and if it works well in their environment because it's going to take some major players like this adopting cloud computing and virtualization resources. Uh, I think virtualization is being adopted by most every major uh, company, but the cloud computing space is something that uh, it's a little slower to spin up and ramp up to that, And but it's going to take, like I said, companies as large as General Motors and them having success with it, not only saving money up front, that's one thing, but can they be successful with it? And that will determine the success of this particular project. So I find that really interesting. Well, trust you've enjoyed the netcast this week. Join us again next time. And remember, until then, keep your head in the cloud.